The Ministry of Secondary Education has developed a distance learning platform in collaboration with MinPostel, CRTV, UNESCO and UNICEF for students of secondary education in Cameroon. A series of lessons taught by qualified teachers. For secondary school students, learning has never been easier with distance learning. An initiative by the Ministry of Secondary Education under the stewardship of Professor Pauline Nalova in collaboration with the Ministry of Post and Telecommunications, CRTV, and UNESCO. And UNICEF. We are introducing distance learning as another teaching and learning method which is different from the traditional classroom setting that you are all used to. In the distance education mode, you are not with the teacher in person, so take your time, relax, listen to the teacher, take down notes, and visit the following links for any questions or answers to your question. Take it in your stride. Danova Lunga, Minister of Secondary Education. Welcome to this revision lesson. Today, we are going to continue with phase four of our geology A-level revision lesson with TC Innocent. Our phase four titled Historical Geology is made up of stratigraphy and earth history and paleontology. Stratigraphy and earth history. Stratigraphy is the study of stratified rocks. The various aspects of stratigraphy include the branches and principles of stratigraphy, the geologic time scale, stratigraphic contacts and correlation, and dating. Branches of stratigraphy. There are major and minor branches of stratigraphy. The major branches of stratigraphy include lithostratigraphy, biostratigraphy, and chronostratigraphy. Lithostratigraphy is the study of rocks based mostly on the lithology, that is, rock type. Whereas biostratigraphy takes into account the fossil content the life content of rocks. In chronostratigraphy, we are looking at time equivalence of rocks. Principles or laws of stratigraphy. These are the various laws or principles through which the Earth's history has been established. We have the principle of uniformitarianism, the principle of superposition, the principle of fauna succession, the principle of original initial horizontality, the principle of cross-cutting relationship, the principle of included fragments, and the principle of lateral continuity. The principle of uniformitarianism is the main principle through which geologists carry out their study of the earth. This principle states that processes that have operated in the past or processes that are operating today operate the same way as those that did in the past. In a summary, the present is the key to the past. It means we study processes of present day, then we link it to those of the past. The principle of superposition, it states that in a sequence of strata, the strata below is older than the one on top, provided 
Such strata has not been disturbed by tectonic forces. It means in a sequence of stratified rocks, the strata get younger as we move towards the top. This principle has its limitation where tectonic forces have tampered with the rock sequence. Principle of fauna succession or strata identified by fossil. This principle states that fossil species succeed one another in a definite time order. And as we move from older formations to younger formations, fossils become complex. It means strata or rock units formed at the same time will contain the same fossil types. Principle of initial or original horizontality. This principle states that sedimentary rock units are initially laid down at a horizontal position. It means any rock unit or strata seen inclined from the horizontal must have been disturbed by some tectonic forces. The limitation of this principle comes in when the position takes place along a slope or on a slope face. The principle of cross-cutting relationship. This principle states that between two geologic units, the one that cuts across another one is younger. For example, if a dike cuts across a country rock, the dike is younger than the country rock. But if we have two events that are parallel to one another, it becomes a little bit complicated to apply this principle. We also have the principle of included fragments. This principle states that rock fragments included in another body of rock are older than the body including them. It means a xenolith is older than the rock fragment that contains it. Principle of lateral continuity. This principle states that sedimentary rock units extend in all directions, implying their thickness is reduced compared to their horizontal extension. This principle can be limited where such formations have been separated by valleys or other depressions caused by erosion. Geologic time scale. The geologic time scale is a chart that shows the sequence of events that have unfolded during the geologic history of the Earth. This time scale is divided from larger units to smaller units into aeon, which is the largest time unit, era, which is the next larger time unit compared to aeon, period, which are sub-time units of era, and epoch, which are smaller or sub-time units of periods. Epochs are defined by rock types. The aeon. The aeon has been divided into two. The Phanerozoic, aeon of visible life, and the Cryptozoic, aeon of poorly understood life forms. Eras have been divided into three based on the evolution of life forms. We have from the oldest to the youngest, Paleozoic, which is an era of ancient life forms, Mesozoic, an era of middle life forms, and Cenozoic, an era of recent life forms. Eras are subdivided into periods. The Paleozoic era, for example, has been divided into Cambrian, Ordovician, Silurian, Devonian, Mississippi, Pennsylvanian, also called Carboniferous, and Permian. Why the Mesozoic era has been divided into Triassic, Jurassic, and Cretaceous. The Cenozoic has been divided into Tertiary and Quaternary.
stratigraphic contacts. Stratigraphic contacts are plane or irregular surfaces separating different rock units. Under stratigraphic contacts, we are going to examine unconformities, transgression and regression, and lateral succession of strata. We begin with unconformities. Unconformities are surfaces that indicate a break in the position. In other words, there are surfaces that mark an interruption in the inflow of sediment in a sedimentary basin. They have been grouped as major unconformities or minor unconformities. For the major unconformities, we have heterolytic unconformity, in which case we have sedimentary rock units in contact with metamorphic or igneous bodies. We have angular unconformities, in which case we have a sequence that is folded, overlain by a sequence that is not folded. We have time unconformity or non-depositional unconformity, in which the adjacent rock units do not succeed one another in time, regular time frame. Transgression and regression. Transgression is simply the movement of water into the land, while regression is the retreat of water from the land. During transgression, rock units that are laid down show a finding upward sequence. It means we'll have units of shallow water below and units of deep water above. During regression, we have a reverse situation. That is, we have formations of deep water below and formations of shallow water on top. That is, coarsening upward. Lateral succession of strata. Transgression and regression brings about fluctuation in the positional environment, such that the positional environments that were adjacent to one another tend to override one another, bringing about a vertical variation in fasci. Lateral succession or lateral variation in fasci causes vertical variation in fasci as environments migrate and their formations override one another. Correlation of successions. Correlation is the determination and the matching of time equivalence of rock units exposed in different localities. For types of correlation, rock units exposed at widely separated geographical localities can be proven to be time equivalent on the basis of rock type, that is little correlation, on the basis of fossil content, that is biocorrelation, or on the basis of H, that is chronocorrelation, the basis of H or time. Several criteria are used during correlation. This involves a relative dating, instrumental well lock, and fossil criteria. We take an example of fossil criteria. Rock units that are widely separated, if they have the same fossil, they can be considered to be time equivalent and as such can be correlated. Fossils used for correlation are referred to as index or zone fossils. Such fossils possess some characteristics. One, they should be 
widely separated. They should have a wide geographical distribution so that they can cover a wide range of geographical localities. Diachronism. Situations might arise where a rogue unit cuts across timeline. It means a particular body of rock has different ages at different localities. Such rock unit is referred to as a diachronous unit. So diachronism is a situation where a body of rock cuts across time line. Stratigraphy has as one important objective to assign ages to rocks and to events in order to establish the history of the earth. Dating is the attribution of ages to rocks and events in order to determine the history of the earth. Dating can be done in two ways. Relative dating and absolute dating. Relative dating involves assigning age to two events or formations in relative terms using words such as older than or younger than without necessarily pronouncing values. Such dating is done mostly with the use of stratigraphic principles. Absolute dating here, events or rocks are given time values or ages in real values. We have radiometric dating, which makes use of the radioisotopes found in rocks and other materials. And we have non-radiometric dating, mostly valve counting and tree rings are the non-radiometric methods of absolute dating. Paleontology. Paleontology is the study of ancient life through the analysis of fossil remains. Under paleontology, we examine types of fossils, conditions for fossilization, mode of preservation of fossils, classification and description of fossils. Types of fossils. Fossils can be described as index fossils, zone fossils, fasciae fossils, transported fossils, derived fossils, body fossils, trace or each fossils. The index and zone fossils are fossils that characterize a particular stratigraphic unit. Such fossils are usually useful for correlation. Fasci fossils are fossils that can reveal the condition of formation of the rock unit in which they are found. Transported fossils, characterized by their surfaces of abrasion, and derived fossils are fossils that must have been reworked from older organic materials deposited. Trace or each no fossils, these are mostly the traces of the activities of organisms. It can be their footprints, their fecal pellets, or the traces left behind by crawling organisms or burrowing organisms. Conditions for fossilization. For organism to be fossilized, such organism should possess preservable parts, preferably hard parts such as the shells, the teeth, or bones. Next aspect is barrier. For an organism to be preserved as fossil, there must be rapid barrier after the death of that organism to avoid the organism being picked up by scavengers or undergoing decomposition. Demographic strength of the organism the higher the number of species of an organism, the higher the chances for one 
or some of those organisms to be preserved as fossils. Rock type. The rock type in which an organism is buried also determines whether that organism will be preserved or not. Rocks, for example, that are sedimentary are good in fossil preservation. But different types of sedimentary rocks have different capacities of preserving fossils. Igneous and metamorphic varieties do not preserve fossils because of their temperatures and pressures of formation. Size of organisms. Smaller organisms are buried faster than larger organisms and as such have high chances of being fossilized. pH. Most of our organisms have carbonates or siliceous test. Depending on the pH of the environment, the hard parts or the parts of the organism that would have been preserved can be dissolved. For example, if the pH is acidic, carbonate shells will not survive. We take environments of fossilization. Different environments show different strength of fossilizing organisms. Land, for example, the continental environment, is not a good environment of fossilization compared to marine environment. Even within the marine rim, different soft environments show different strengths of fossilization. We look at mode of preservation of fossils. How are the organisms preserved? Organisms can be preserved entirely. Have the, an example of frozen mammoth of Siberia preserved in Glacier. Organisms can be preserved, soft parts altered. It means we have the soft parts preserved, but altered, maybe in the form of carbon residue or reduced to other forms. Conservation of hard parts unaltered. The hard part of an organism can be preserved unaltered. Hard parts can also be preserved altered. That is changed to a different compound before being preserved. Fossils can be preserved as traces of animal activities. These are the ichno fossils where we have but the traces of the animals that are preserved. Occurrence and uses of fossils. Fossils are common in sedimentary rocks, rare and absent even in metamorphic and sedimentary, uh, metamorphic and igneous rocks. For the uses, fossils are indicators of ancient climatic belts. Since each organism has its unique climatic condition under which it survives, their presence in rocks reveal to geologists that such conditions must have operated in the past. Fossils are indicators of sedimentary environments. We have different sedimentary environments, and these different sedimentary environments are characterized by different organisms. Fossils can also be used as evidence of changing sea level. For example, we might find marine fossils in an area that is no longer covered by sea, implying that area must have once been covered by sea and the sea has retreated. Gaps in the fossil record. It is true that organisms succeed one another in a definite time order. But the record of such succession has gaps. These gaps in fossil records are due to many factors, ranging from some fossils that would have lacked hard preservable parts to those that would have been eaten up by scavengers or decomposed by the pH or acidic solution. Some rocks will not even permit the formation or the preservation of fossils, such as the igneous and the metamorphic varieties. All these reasons 
account to or account for the gaps in fossil record. For fossil assemblages, fossil assemblages can be termed life assemblages if the fossils are preserved in their living form, in their living mode or living position or dead assemblages, fossils that must have been reworked before being redeposited. Classification and description of fossils. Here we are going to look at basis for classification of fossils, steps for describing fossils. For the basis of classification, we have morphological and ecological aspects. On this basis, we have grouped our fossils into six phyla, mollusca, brachiopoda, echinodemata, atropoda, hemicodata, and selenterata. Each phyla has its diagnostic characteristics. Describing a fossil. In the description of a fossil, emphasis is laid on the morphological features in relation to the mode of life. Those features that the fossil has that can reveal to us the mode of life that the fossil had. We state external features which can help us to identify a group to which the fossil belongs. We state age range of the fossil, try to draw annotated diagrams, and we also try to give the stratigraphic significance of the fossil. We have come to the end of our phase four, where we saw paleontology and stratigraphy. Stay connected for revision questions. The Ministry of Secondary Education has developed a distance learning platform in collaboration with MinPostel, CRTV, UNESCO and UNICEF for students of secondary education in Cameroon. A series of lessons taught by qualified teachers. For secondary school students, learning has never been easier with distance learning. An initiative by the Ministry of Secondary Education under the stewardship of Professor Pauline Nalobalyunga, in collaboration with the Ministry of Post and Telecommunications, CRTV, and UNESCO. And UNICEF. We are introducing distance learning as another teaching and learning method which is different from the traditional classroom setting that you are all used to. In the distance education mode, you are not with the teacher in person, so take your time, relax, listen to the teacher, take down notes and visit the following links for any questions or answers to your question. Take it in your stride. Danova Lyunga, Minister of Secondary Education. Part one of our revision is the multiple choice format where a question is read, four suggested responses are read with only one being the correct answer. Question one, fossil with still living forms today are most likely A, extant fossils, B, extinct fossils, C, index fossils, and D, zone fossils. Our correct answer is A, extant fossils. These are fossils that still have existing forms. 
Question two, which of the following environments will most likely ease fossil preservation? A, deserts, B, beaches, C, cast, and D, deep sea. Our correct answer here is deep sea. Here we are away from high energy environment. Question three. Ancient physics is referred to as A, tract, B, trap, C, coprolite, and D, artifacts. Our correct answer is C, coprolite. Question four. When rocks get younger, fossils become A, complex, B, simple, C, similar, D, younger. Our correct answer is A. As time goes on, organisms become complex. Question five. Fossils that provide information about the rock layer in which they are found are called A, guide fossils, B, excavation fossils, C, restricted fossils, and D, indigenous fossils. Our correct answer here is A, guide fossils, or zone fossils, or index fossils. Question seven. Rapid burial of organism during fossilization prevents A, preservation of organism, B, rapid decomposition of organism, C, exposes organisms to scavengers, and D, fossilization of hard parts. Our correct answer is B, rapid decomposition of organisms. It prevents rapid decomposition of organisms. Question six. Organic skeletal material that produce many bone beds from fossils, form fossils called A, Remani fossils, B, abraded fossils, C, skeletal fossils, and D, key bed fossils. Our correct answer here is A, remaining fossils or reworked fossils. Question eight. Plant hard parts are composed of A, sponges, B, cellulose, C, phosphate, D, woody tissue. Our correct answer is B, cellulose. Fossils for and pollen grains indicate A, the type of animals, B, the type of organic remains, C, the type of plants, and D, the type of traces. The correct answer here is C, the type of plants. Ancient forests can be retraced from the study of pollens. Which type of dentition is represented by fossil A? A, taxodont. B, disodont. C, schizodont. And D, heterodont. Our correct response is D, heterodont dentition. Question 12. What is the shape description of the fossil beside? A, triangular. B, compressed. C, dendritic. And D, coniferous. Our correct response is A, 
Here we have asked to shape description, not the morphological description. Because if we look at the, the form of the fossil, we might confuse the correct answer, which is A, with C, which is dendritic. Study of rock units based on their fossil content is A, strat stratification, B, stratigraphy, C, biostratigraphy, and D, fossilization. Our correct response here is biostratigraphy. Question 17. Bet with same little fashi but different ages are A, marker bet, B, index bet, C, key bet, and D, diachronos bet. Our correct response here is D, diachronos bet. Question 18. In the contact between folded and unfolded beds, the unfolded beds are A, older, B, younger, C, ancient, and D, earliest. Our correct answer here is younger. This is concerning the concept of angular unconformity, where the older sequence is folded and the younger sequence is horizontal. The largest unit that geologists use to measure the age of the Earth is A, L, B, system, C, age, and D, sequence. Our correct answer here is A, Aeon. Aeon is the largest geologic time division. Different stratigraphic units are separated from others by A, Rex, B, limit, C, contact, and D, bedding planes. Our correct response here is contact. This contact can be conformable, it can be unconformable. Question 22. Surfaces separating unconformable beds are called A, unconformable beds, B, stratigraphic contact, C, unconformity, and D, unconformities. Our correct answer here is D, unconformities. Unconformities are surfaces that mark break in deposition. So they separate early form unit from younger units. In measuring the amount of question 24, sorry, is based on the text above. In measuring the amount of the parent atom of a certain radioactive element present in a rock, it was observed that only one quarter of the parent atoms were left in the rock. The radioactive element in the mineral decays with half-life of 200 million years. Question 24. What is the amount of daughter atoms? A, one quarter, B, three quarter, C, half, and D, one. Our correct answer here is B. Please remember, parent isotopes decay to give daughter products. So if the parent isotope falls by 50%, then daughter products should also be existing 50%. Here we have the parent isotope one quarter. It means three quarter is daughter product. Question 27. How old is the rock that contains this mineral? A, 100 million years. B, 200 million years. C, 300 million years. And D, 400 million years. Remember, the half-life of that radioactive isotope is 200 million years. Our correct answer is D. 400 million years. 
we take simple analysis from the, for the parent isotope to fall to 50% is one half life. That is half. And that gives half daughter product. For the parent atom to fall to 25%, that is the second half life. And at 25%, the daughter product is already at 75%. So we have two half lives involved. And if the half life is 200 million years, two half lives will be 400 million years. We now move to our paper two time revision questions. Candidates are reminded to use illustrations even when not demanded by the wordings of the question. Question one, describe the variations in the following features of trilobites. A, facial suture, B, pygidium, and C, general angle. A, we first of all use a diagrammatic representation where we have the various facial suture, proparian, gonatoparian, opistoparian. Now, we have facial sutures that either lies in the internal margin or the posterior margin, that's opistoparian. Example of that is paradoxite. Or we have general angles that cut through the facial suture. So on the diagram, we have the three major general angles illustrated. On pygidium, the size of the pygidium of trilobites vary from one species to another. When the size, here we compare the size of the pygidium with the size of the cephalon, which is the head. The pygidium and the cephalon might have the same size. In such case, we talk of isopagos. Example is Elenus. The pygidium might be larger than the cephalon. In this case, we have micropagos. The pygidium might be smaller than the cephalon in some cases. We have general angles commonly drawn into spines in paradoxite. Some carry additional spines at the margins of the cephalon or the glabella. We have the mirror pits. Others have rounded general angles. Question two, what do you understand by the term unconformity? Describe the main types of unconformities. How have unconformities been recognized on the field? To a unconformities are surfaces that mark a break in the position. They can be eros erosional, they can be surfaces of weathering, or they can be soil layers. Describe the main types of unconformities. Here we have angular unconformity, where one sequence, older sequence is folded, and the younger sequence is horizontal. We have non-depositional unconformity, characterized by a time period during which no sediment was brought in or period of non-deposition. Usually, the two layers separated by such surface, they do not succeed one another in a regular time order as shown by the stratigraphic column. We have heterolytic unconformity, which is the association of sedimentary rocks with igneous or metamorphic varieties. C, how have unconformities been recognized on the field? 
We have the presence of Barsa conglomerate, the presence of residual weather sheds, the occurrence of buried soil profiles, the occurrence of manganese nodules, and the occurrence of gaps in the evolution of fossil groups. Question three. Explain the suitability of the following environments of fossilization. One, continental shelf. Two, abyssal zone. Three, littoral zone. Four, land. And five, lakes. 3B, outline five uses of fossils. We take the first part. We examine the continental shelf. It is favorable for fossil preservation because in this area, there are abundant organisms. The abyssal zone is also a favorable zone for fossil preservation. Within the abyssal zone, sediments are usually very fine green, and in such areas, fossils will be preserved with a lot of details. We look at land. On land, barrier is slow because inflow of sediment is not as fast as in the ocean. We consider the littoral zone. Because of those fossils that cannot withstand the energy level will be destroyed. Lakes are also favorable areas for fossilization because we have inflow of sediments coming from runoffs. Uses of fossils. Fossils can be used for correlation. Fossils can be used to establish the geologic time scale. Fossils can also be used to establish paleoclimate. Fossils are the source of some of our natural resources, especially micro fossils that accumulate to form our petroleum. Revision question four is a practical type. Where candidates are given drawings of fossils in separate insert to describe. Study the fossil drawing provided on separate insert. You have the fossil drawing. Then you have questions on your question paper to use the fossil diagrams on separate insert and answer. A, on the diagrams, name the parts labeled O, P, Q, R, S, T, and U. B, state the diagnostic features for identifying the fossils under this phylum. C, state the phylum, class, and genus of the fossil. D, state with reason the mode of life of the organism. E, state and describe the type of dentition showed by the fossil. F, state the age range of the fossil. O, the arrow for O lies on the umbu of our shell. P is the hinge plate. That is where we have the teeth and socket. Cure is the palia sinus. Arrow is our palia line. S is the muscle scar. T represent growth rings. And U is the ligament. B, state the diagnostic features for identifying the fossils under this phylum. Equivalent shells with two muscle scars almost the same size, isomerium. They have shallow pallia sinus and oval shaped shell. Semicircular in outline, radial rib, amphidetic ligament, 
taxodon dentition, isomarium, entire palia line. State the phylum, class, and genus of the fossil. Phylum, mollusca, class, bivalvia, and genus, venus. Mode of life, shallow marine borrowers due to shallow palia sinus. Dentition shown by fossil, taxodon dentition with small, many, same size teeth which are radially arranged. Age range from oligocent to present. We have come to the end of our phase four, where we saw paleontology and stratigraphy. Our next revision lesson will be on applied geology. See you in our next revision class.